when I say OSHA compliant hazard communication standard training, you may think, well, that sounds boring. Please stop talking to me. If I zone out for the entire thing, does it still count? But there's more to this OSHA standard than an attention grabbing title. A lot more. In the United States, we as consumers have become much more discerning about what's in the products that we buy. This is true when it comes to food, home improvement, and cosmetics. But when it comes to hazardous substances in the workplace, we tend to be a little bit more casual. Get her done! I'm Rachel Walla with Ally Safety, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the hazard communication standard and why it matters to you and your health. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Have you ever been eating junk food and you start to get suspicious that it's just a little bit too good to be natural? So you start looking at the ingredients on the package and slowly you start to comprehend that nothing in this package has come in contact with nature. Except for maybe corn, and that was like three processing facilities ago. So you start Googling the ingredients, and pretty soon you're an expert on things you can't even pronounce. Most of us as consumers are getting much more discerning about what we eat. But eating is only one of the ways that we can get exposed to hazardous substances. There's also inhalation. Inhalation is how we get exposed to things like asbestos, silica, and of course now coronavirus. There's also absorption through the skin, which a lot of people tend to forget about. But remember, if you can get a dose of nicotine through the skin, or birth control, or vitamins, it's just as likely that you can get a toxic exposure through your skin. Or injection. Injection happens when we get exposed to a hazardous substance through a break or a cut in the skin or when a hazardous or sharp object breaks the skin's barrier and we get exposed to whatever was on that object. A classic example of this is needle sticks in medical facilities. And lastly, back to ingestion. Chances are, if you're eating lunch in a contaminated workplace or with dirty hands, you are most likely ingesting some of whatever it is that you work with. When it comes to hazardous substances in the workplace, we tend to leave that all up to our employer, despite the fact that our own actions have huge implications on our own safety and health. And what's even more interesting is that we as employees only gained the right to know about the hazardous substances in our workplace in the 1980s. Before that, the work world was pretty suspect. You see, in 1983, OSHA implemented the Hazard Communication Standard. This was also known as the Employee Right to Know Act. But I want to talk to you about how we inspect for compliance with our Hazard Communication Standard for Construction. We do that on an every inspection now, no matter what, because we want all employers and employees to know the hazards of the chemicals at their work sites. The point of this act was for employees to be informed about the hazardous substances that they're working with and be protected from those substances. Most managers and workers don't know as much as they should about the chemicals they work with. It's also the same standard that gave us things like safety data sheets or SDSs and outlined how hazardous materials have to be labeled. Research hazardous chemicals for yourself. I think you'll agree that minimizing the risk of employee exposure to hazardous chemicals will result in a healthier, more productive workforce. This was a huge step forward in workplace safety. Now, if you're like a lot of people I know, you may be thinking, well, that's great, but have you ever tried to read an SDS? Not only are they boring, but you practically need a degree in chemistry to understand what they're trying to tell you. Well, I've got good news for you there too. Remember when we talked about the hazard communication standard being the employee right to know standard? Well, back in 2012, the U.S. implemented what's known as the Globally Harmonized System. It was a really good thing for workplace safety, because although we got the right to know from the hazard communication standard, this actually more gave us the right to comprehend. 
What I mean by that is they made SDSs and chemical labels so much easier to understand than they had been previously. So today, you don't need an advanced degree to understand what an SDS is saying. It's easy. There's super simple pictograms, easy to understand labels, and the SDSs are organized in 16 sections that are much easier to interpret. You can make a huge impact on your health and safety just by taking an active role and looking into what the hazards of these substances actually are. So the next time that you interact with a hazardous substance at work, make sure that you take the right precautions to keep yourself safe and healthy. That's what the Hazard Communication Standard is all about. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.